To him alone be all the glory, to him alone be all the honor, to him alone be all the adoration, the Lamb of God that was slain, the head of the church, the Prince of Peace, our chief cornerstone, we give you the glory. What a mighty God we serve, all sufficient God, the God that is more than enough. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord that is always present, the God that sits above the circle of the earth. The heavens is his throne and the earth is his footstool, who is like unto him. He is greater than the greatest, he is mightier than the mightiest. He is the Lord and there is no other. The champion of our salvation, the author and the finisher of our, our faith. We give him the glory, we give him the honor, we give him the adoration. The God that liveth forevermore, the God that can do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we can ever ask or imagine. What a mighty God we serve. Father, we lift up your name today. We honor you. We appreciate you. We glorify you. Our Ebenezer, our stone of hell, the Lord that has brought us thus far, we say to him alone be all the glory forever and ever. Our God is good and his mercy endures forever. What a mighty God we serve. Child of God, put your trust in him. He is mighty to save. He is the able God. With him all things are possible. With him nothing is impossible. Let us put our faith in him. Let us put our confidence in him. Let us build on the solid rock that never fails. What a mighty God we serve. We say to him alone be all the glory forever and ever. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Child of God, the master is talking to us today about the lambs. The lambs, can we turn our Bibles to John chapter 21 as I read from verse 10 to verse 15, the eternal words of the living God. The Bible says, Bring some of the fish you've just caught, Jesus said. So Simon Peter went aboard and dragged the net to the shore. There were 153 large fish, and yet the net hadn't turned. Now come, have some breakfast, Jesus said. None of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Then Jesus served them the bread and the fish. And this was the third time Jesus had appeared to his disciples since he had been raised from the dead. Verse 15, after breakfast, Jesus asked, Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? Yes, Lord, Peter replied. You know I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. What a mighty God. What did Jesus tell Peter? He said, then feed my lambs. Then feed my lambs. The heart of the Father today. The heart of the Lord is after the lambs. Child of God, Jesus said, then feed my lambs. How are we feeding the lambs? How are we feeding the lambs? Oh, we may say we are feeding the sheep. Okay, what about the lambs? That's the question that our father has today. Beloved child of God, there is a problem in our time and our generation that the Lord wants us to identify and position ourselves well so that we are not found wanting. The Lord has identified a problem. Beloved child of God, we can see from that passage that Peter was and the other disciples, they were busy about something. They were busy about something. It mattered so much to Jesus that he had to appear again. He had to appear again. And you can see from what Jesus was saying to Peter, he asked the question, do you love me more than this? He was passing his heart to, 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 to Simon Peter. Do you love me more than this? What was Peter doing there? Peter was busy fishing and Jesus had to appear and ask him a question. When G Peter said, yes, I love you, Jesus said, then feed my lambs. Look into the heart of Jesus today. Beloved child of God, what is the spiritual state of our children? The spiritual state of the lambs. 
You know that as parents, we have great responsibility to our children. But in our generation today, our responsibility is highly neglected. I saw in about I saw a grandma of about 90 years in the in, in the store. When I got talking to her, you know what the grandma said? She said, Can you imagine? My grandson came to my house and I sent him to my bedroom and I said, Go get me the Bible. And my grandson asked me, Grandma, what is a Bible? Child of God, think about that. That's the generation that we are in. The generation whereby children, don't, some children don't even know what a Bible is. Children of Christian parents. Children of Christian parents. You know, for the grandma to have a Bible, that means that she is a believer. What about her child? And what did her child give to her, his own child? He loved. This matter is highly important in the heart of the master. Don't ignore it. The master is bringing his heart to us today. The spiritual state of the children. You know, can we turn our Bibles to Genesis chapter 18? Let's look at something in Genesis 18 for us to understand the heart of the father. Genesis chapter 18, and I am reading from verse 18 to verse 19. The Bible says, For Abraham will certainly become a great and mighty nation, nation, and all the nations of the earth will be blessed through him. I have singled him out so that he will direct his sons and their families to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just. Then I will do for Abraham all that I have promised. Beloved, did you follow the reading of that passage? Pouring out the heart of the Father, the agenda of the living God, he said, Abraham will certainly become a great and a mighty nation. Child of God, are you not a great nation? Are we not here singing Abraham's blessings are mine? Are we not patterning our lives after the life of our father Abraham? And so if the Lord said it to Abraham, he is talking to you and he is talking to me. He said, Abraham will certainly become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth will be blessed through him. Beloved child of God, if we are a great nation, if we are great, do you know that do you know one of the things that prove our greatness? The Bible says, I have singled him out so that he will direct his sons and their families to keep the way of the Lord. Our greatness is when we can fulfill this purpose. That we, as a people of the living God, our children, our families, keep the way of the Lord, doing what is right and just before God. The Bible says when he does that, he said, then I will do for Abraham all I have promised. We have this great responsibility. We have this great responsibility. We have this great responsibility, child of God. When we, talk about us, when we talk about our father Abraham, what was his greatest heart desire? What did he want God to really do for him? Let's understand it from Genesis chapter 15. And I'm reading from verse 2 all the way to verse 6. The Bible says, but Abraham replied, O sovereign Lord, what good are all these blessings when I don't even have a son? Since you've given me no children, Eliezer of Damascus, a servant in my household, will inherit all my wealth. You have given me no descendants of my own, so one of my servants will be my heir. Then the Lord said to him, No, your servant will not be your heir, for you will have a son of your own who will, in, who will be your heir. Then the Lord took Abraham outside and said to him, Look up into the sky. And count the stars. If you can, that's how many descendants you will have. And Abraham believed the Lord, and the Lord counted him a right, counted him as righteous because of his faith. One thing about Abraham that we know that his greatest heart desire was that he will have a son. His greatest heart desire was that he would have a son. The same way many of us are pressing on before God. 
And we are saying, Lord, concerning the fruit of the womb, give me this child. Many of us are pressing, asking the Lord for the, for, for, for the gift of a child. Some of us, we are waiting on the Lord. Some of us, our quivers are full. Some of us, God, in his own wisdom, have positioned children, giving us children through different means. Beloved, why? The Lord wants us to know something about the children. The Lord wants us to know something about the children. Do you know what? The Bible says in, in Psalm 127 verse 3, the Bible says children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from him. Children are a gift from the Lord. Children are from the Lord. Children are priceless. Children are precious. Children are gifts from the living God, child of God. And do you know he has given us this gift in so many ways? Some of us, we adopted. Some of us, we are guardians. Some of us, we are teachers. God has put this gift around us through different means. Abraham knew the value of this gift. That's why even though he had his wealth, his heart still cried for something. Father, give me a son. Father, give me a son. And so today, God has fulfilled this promise in our lives through different means. But beloved, the question of the Father for us this morning is that do we know how precious these gifts are? Do we know how priceless these gifts are? Beloved, do we really know? Because they are given to us for a purpose. They are given to us for a purpose. And that's why the word of God tells us clear in Genesis 18. God said, I know Abraham. I know that he will teach his children about me. I know he will direct them to me. And so, child of God, God has given you the same gift he gave Abraham. Is he sure that we are managing them well? Are we truly leading them to the Father? Because you know what? God has an expectation. The gifts that he has put around us, he has an expectation. We want to see some of those expectations. Look at Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3, and I am reading verse 6 of it. The Bible says, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Then when Moses had this, he covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. Now look at it again in Matthew. In Matthew chapter 22, and I'm reading verse 32. The Bible says, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. So he is the God of the living, not the dead. God has an expectation that he will not only be your God, but the God of your children. That he will not only be my God, but the God of my children. And so he is the God of Abraham. He is the God of Isaac. He is the God of Jacob. He is the God of Joseph. And it continues like that. He is a generational God. He doesn't stop with you. The assignment that Abraham had was to make sure that he is the God of Isaac. The assignment that Isaac had was to make sure that he is the God of Jacob. Child of God, what about me? What about you? Is God a generational God in our families? Or is the movement of his dominion stopping with us, child of God? Do you know something? Look at Genesis chapter 21. I'm reading Genesis 21 and I'm reading verse 12. The Lord has a message for me. He has a message for you. The verse 12 of it says something. It says, so God, so God told Abraham, do not be upset over the boy and your servant. Do whatever Sarah tells you. For Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. Child of God. Do you know what God is saying? Your descendants are going to be counted before him. Your descendants are going to be counted before the living God. Child of God, let it enter our mind today. We want to understand it further. Let us look at the story of Noah. What happened when Noah was building the ark? 
Let's look at Genesis chapter 6 to understand what God is saying there, verse 18. Genesis 6, verse 18, he said, But I will confirm my covenant with you. So enter the boat, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. Then the same Genesis chapter 7 from verse 6 to 7 says, Noah was 600 years old when the flood covered the earth. He went on board the boat to escape the flood. He and his wife, his sons and their wives. What is happening there? God counted the people that entered the ark. God told Abraham, he said, through Isaac, your descendants will be counted. Child of God. When it came to the time of Noah, and Noah was to enter that ark, God had an expectation. And God named the people. And who did God count? The people in the house of Noah. And so, child of God, when we appear before God, he is going to count. He's going to count. You have five children. God is going to count. He will count. Is your household complete? He is a generation of God. When he came to save Noah, he did not consider only Noah. He thought about Noah's son. He thought about Noah's wife. He counted the household of Noah to enter the ark, to escape the flood that was upon the earth. Look at our time. Look at what is happening around us. Child of God, look at the world. Are you not seeing the flood that is in the world? Are you not seeing the wickedness that is in the world? Are you not seeing the deception that is in the world? Child of God, are you not seeing the immoralities that is in the world? Are you not seeing the kind of wicked generation that we have? In the days of Noah, at such a time as that, God's expectation was that Noah will not be alone in the ark. God's expectation is that Noah alone will not escape the flood. The expectation of God was that the whole family would be redeemed from that destruction. And so, child of God, it hasn't changed. God is counting. He said, through Isaac, your descendants will be counted. And let us, and so God wants us to know that he said, God, or specification. That children, that child that we desired so much and he gave to us, he has an expectation. And his expectation is that our children will not be wasted. That our children will not be destroyed, child of God. That is the expectation that God has. And that's why he clearly gave us an instruction in Deuteronomy. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 11. Deuteronomy 11, and I am reading from verse 18 to verse 22, the Bible says, So commit yourself wholeheartedly to these words of mine. Tie them on your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders. Teach them to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are on the road, when you are going to bed and when you are getting up. Write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gate, so that as long as the sky remains above the earth, you and your children may flourish in the land the Lord swore to give to your ancestors. Be careful to obey all these commands I am giving you. Show love to the Lord your God by walking in his ways and holding tightly to him. The Bible says that we should show love to the Lord our God by walking in his ways. What is his way? This is one of his ways that he's showing us. He said, commit yourself wholeheartedly to my words. This words, he said, tie them on your hands. Wear them on your foreheads as reminders. That means this is very important. Don't joke with it. Put it on your forehead. Let it enter your head. Let it enter your mind. He said, teach them to your children. What is he asking us to teach our children? The ways of the Lord. Teach them to your children. He said, talk about them when you are home. Beloved, when we are home, what are we doing with our children? Many parents are not even home. So there's nothing to talk about with our children. Child of God. The word of God clearly gives us an instruction to teach our children the ways of the Lord. To teach our children the ways of the Lord. That is the assignment that God gave us. 
It is not a responsibility that God expects us to transfer to another person. Say, no, I'm too busy in my place of work. Because of that, God knows that I don't have time to teach my children the way of the Lord. Beloved child of God, it is not, it is not justified before the living God. That is why Jesus had to ask Peter, do you love me more than this? Do you love me more than bread? Because we belong to a generation that parents now love bread more than their children. Parents love their business more than their children. Parents love child of God, their personal interests more than their children. That's the truth about our generation. The word of God in Deuteronomy chapter 8 tells us a lot of things that must happen in the home. A lot of things that must happen in the home. The Bible says very clear, it says we should teach our children. We should talk to them about what? The ways of the Lord say when we are home. That means that we should use the word of God to discuss, to reason with our children. To lead them in righteousness, to correct them with God's word, to teach them the way of the Lord. That's the expectation of God, that we should talk to them about God's word when we are at home. It's the will of God that we should be at home to do this. And so to tell God that I am not home is not justified before God. The Bible says, and when you are on the road, when you are going to bed, when you are getting up, where are you going to? Say even on the road, when you are at home, when you get up. And so God has a lot of assignment for us in the home. Belong to a generation where mothers of today will give birth. This is America. Mothers will give birth then after two weeks, transport the baby to their mother in Africa and say, take care of this child for me. After 10 years, when I am comfortable, I will come and carry this child. Child of God, think about it. What kind of generation do we have? Look at the children of our generation. Look at the high level of immorality. The jails are full. Children having children, babies having babies. Children left to themselves to train themselves. And because of that, internet is training children. Because of that, friends are training children. Parents are no more on duty post. Child of God, Jesus is concerned about the lambs. Jesus is concerned about the lambs. The Bible tells us very clear that as long as the sky is above the earth, as long as the sky is above the earth, and so this word is very relevant to us today, that as long as this sky is above the earth, it is our responsibility to teach the children the ways of the Lord, to teach the children the way forward, which is the, their walk with the living God. And so, beloved child of God, as parents, are we wholeheartedly committed to this to, the, to, to, to these instructions? Are we concerned about the spiritual state of our children? Lord, child of God, are we playing our part? Because in God's word, when Jesus said to Peter, take care of my lambs, do you know why? Because they need special care. The lambs need to be taken care of. The lambs need to be taken care of. It is our responsibility to take care of them. Let's look at Malachi. Let's go to Malachi and see something in God's eternal word. Malachi chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 15 to verse 16. The Bible says, Didn't the Lord make you one with your wife? In body and in spirit, you are his. And what does, the, does, does he want? Godly children from your union. So guard your heart. Remain loyal to the wife of your youth. For I hate divorce, says the Lord, the God of Israel. To divorce your wife is so overwhelm, is to so overwhelm her with cruelty, says the Lord of heaven's army. So guard your heart. Do not be unfaithful to your wife. Child of God, God is showing us his heart. You know his heart? You know that God is the one that originated marriage. The Bible says, didn't the Lord make you one with your wife? It's the Lord that or originated marriage. And the Bible says, 
And what does he want? Why did he originate marriage? What does he want from there? That's what he's telling us. He said, godly children from our union. Godly children, that's what he wants. So child of God, we are married. What is the spiritual state of our children? Are they godly children? Are they godly children? Look at our times today. A lot of things are messed up in the family. Don't you think that all these things have effect on the children? Because of the, the broken world, because of not doing things God's way, the children are victims of broken homes and so many things. The devil is, is, is eating children like minced meat. Child of God, the heart of God is concerned. The heart of the father is concerned. That he allowed us to marry not because we just to just have sexual to just to just for sex alone. No, godly children. It's a desire in God's heart. And so, child of God, if we know how to run after other things, let's not forget that our number one assignment from the Lord, one of the foremost 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 ones, is what that we should produce for Him godly children that's why he's bringing this reminder our way today that's why he's bringing this reminder on our way today because child of god the heart of the father is bleeding for the lambs the heart of the father is bleeding for the lambs he wants us to just see a picture of his heart so that we will wake up and be serious so that we will wake up it is a wake up call so that we wake up to responsibility. In Genesis chapter 37, hear God's word from verse 31. Their father recognized it immediately. Yes, he said, it is my son's robe. A wild animal must have eaten him. Joseph has clearly been torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes and dressed himself in bola. He mourned deeply for his son. For a long time, his family all tried to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. I will go to my grave mourning for my son. He will weep and say, and then he would weep again. Child of God, the heart of God concerning the children. Animals are eating the children, child of God. Animals are eating the children. Sin is eating children up. Where are the parents? Look at the heart of Jacob when he was told that an animal had eaten his son. How did he feel about it? Use it to picture the mind of God. Could he be comforted? Could he be comforted? That's the heart of the father for the children. That a lot of children have been eaten by animals. The heart of the father is bleeding. He is concerned. He recognizes every child. He has a plan and a purpose for every child. And so when he sees that child going contrary to the vision he has for that child, the heart of the father is bleeding. The heart of the father is bleeding. Say so wild animals must have eaten him. Child of God. The wild things that is happening in the earth today is eating a lot of our children. And the father is calling our attention to it. The Bible said, Jacob tore his clothes, dressed in bola, mourned deeply for his son for a long time. God is mourning. God is mourning concerning the state of our children. God is mourning. Why? Because animals are eating the children. Jesus loves the lamb so much. He loves the lamb. He loves the lamb. That's why in Matthew chapter 19, verse 14, let me read something briefly from God's word. From Matthew 19, verse 14, listen to God's word. The Bible says, But Jesus said, Let the children come to me. Don't stop them. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to those who are like these children. 15 says, and he placed his hands 
on their heads and blessed them before he left. Child of God, Jesus said, let the children come to me. Don't stop them. It's an instruction. Let the children come. Who stops them? We. And he's saying, we should stop stopping the children. How do we stop the children? Children are given to us to nurture. When we are not on our duty post, to nurture them spiritually. Child of God, do you know what we are doing? We are stopping them. We are stopping them. And the master is saying, don't stop them. Why? He said, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. What does that mean? The kingdom of God belongs to them. The heart of the father is not a hell should be given to the children. No, he wants his children in his kingdom. They came from him. His will is that they return back to him. And so he's telling us, let the children come because when the children come to Jesus, do you know what he does? He lays his hand. He lays his hand. He pours the blessing. Equip them to have dominion. Equip them to have authority. But it is heartbreaking to the Lord that many parents are not even thinking about the spiritual state of their children. They're not even thinking about it. Child of God, what happened in 1 Samuel chapter 3? What happened there? Let's go and see what happened in God's word. Let's see what happened in 1 Samuel chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 1 all the way to verse 13. Meanwhile, the boy Samuel served the Lord by assisting Eli. Now in those days, messages from the Lord were very rare and visions were quite uncommon. One night, Eli, who was almost blind by now, had gone to bed. The Lamb of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle near the ark of God. Suddenly, the Lord called out, Samuel. Yes, Samuel replied. What is it? He got up and ran to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? I didn't call you, Eli replied. Go back to bed. So he did. The Lord called out again. Samuel, again, Samuel went to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? I didn't call you, my son. Eli said, go back to bed. Samuel did not yet know the Lord because he had never had a message from the Lord before. So the Lord called a third time and once more, Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? Eli realized it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So he said to Samuel, go lie down again. And if someone calls again, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed. The Lord came and called us before. Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, speak, your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, I'm about to do a shocking thing in Israel. I'm going to carry out all my threats against Eli and his family from beginning to end. I have warned him that judgment is coming upon his family forever because his sons are blaspheming God and he hasn't disciplined them. So I have vowed that the sins of Eli and his sons will never be forgiven by sacrifice or offerings. Child of God, what was happening here? We have seen that a child needs training. Samuel, Samuel, God we call. But Samuel didn't know what to do. He needed a guardian. He needed a parent. He needed someone to be able to give him that direction. And when he kept moving to and fro, unable to sleep. Why? He needed guidance. He needed guidance. And when Eli, after how many attempts, recognized that this is the Lord calling this boy. Do you know what happened in that place? God started talking to a little boy. What message is he passing to us? Number one, God is calling children. Number two, you are the one to help them identify the call of the Lord. I am the one to help them recognize his voice and give them direction on what to do. That is training. That is why the Bible says we should train up a child in the way he should go. That is a place of training. And beloved child of God, God wants us to know that he has things to tell the children. What God was telling Samuel, beloved, as a human being, wouldn't you think that it's too big for a child? I want you to know. God wants me to know. God wants you to know that he has great, great things that he wants to reveal to the children. He 
He wants to tell them big things. When God got the attention of Samuel, God began to tell Samuel big things. Big things about big people. Eli was the big one, bigger than Samuel. But when God began to, to pour his heart to a little boy, he was pouring the heart. His heart ached concerning what a big person, an elder, an elder, maybe a grandpa even, was doing. That is how much God can do with a child. That is how much God can do with a child. He knows the capacity that he has put inside them. That's why when God's heart was heavy concerning the abominations that were going on in Israel during Eli's, Eli's time, God poured his heart to a little boy. And child of God, that little boy did not disappoint the father. And so we cannot say, oh, they are too small. No, we cannot say that. And beloved, if we see what God said in that place, they are very fearful things. Fearful things. When he began to talk to Samuel, you know, the Bible says in verse 12 of that first Samuel chapter 3, I am going to carry out all my threats against Eli and his family from beginning to end. To end. I have warned him that judgment is coming upon his family forever because his sons are blaspheming God and he hasn't disciplined them. Child of God. Because a father did not discipline his child. Because the, a father did not train his, his child to know the fear of God. And because of that, the lifestyle of the child was blaspheming God. What did God say? God said he will judge. He will judge his family forever. You know what that forever means? Forever means that it applies to all. It's an eternal word. Forever, that if families raise children that blaspheme against God, his judgment will come if parents fail to do their part. That's why it's so important. That's why it's so important. And we can see how brutally God judged the fam a family. Why? The children were blasphemous against God. And so, child of God, this matter is very important. It's very, very important. Can't we see that in the book of Acts, the children are not left out? In Acts chapter 2, verse 17, the Bible says, In the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Let me stop there. In the last days, the spirit of God is for all. So there is nothing like this one is too small. No. And God has an assignment for the children in this end time. He said, your children, they will prophesy. So God has an agenda. God has a plan. And it is our responsibility to do our part so that the purpose of God will stand. So that the counsel of God will stand. And so, child of God, there is a call from his throne of grace to me and to you today. There is a call. And we are seeing it from 1 Samuel chapter 17. And I'm reading from verse 34 to verse 37. The Bible says, and I read, says, But David persisted. I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goat, he said. When a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from his mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I have done this to both lions and bears. And I'll do this to this pagan Philistine too. For he has defiled the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. Saul finally consented, all right, go ahead. And he said, may the Lord be with you. Child of God, God is passing a message to us. Get up and be persistent about the children. The Bible says that, but David persisted. David persisted. The Lord is saying that lions, bears are stealing the lambs. He has an expectation. He's telling us, go after it now. Arise today, child of God. 
Maybe some of us will say, oh, I didn't know. Today we know. The father is saying, do what David did. Have the heart of David. Because when the lion and the bear came for the lamb, David did not just sit down. David fought. David persisted. David did not give up. He said something. He said, when the lion or bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from his mouth. God is saying we should go and rescue his lamb from the mouth of the enemy. We should go and rescue his lamb. He said, if the enemy, if the animal turns at me, I catch it by the jaw and I club it to death. Kill anything that will resist you from doing that, child of God. The resistance will come. But face it. The love of money has become a force that is pulling many of us back from fighting this battle. Please, if you have to leave that job to fight for the future of your child, wake up, leave that job. Leave that job. I had an experience with one of the disciples. A lady that the Lord revealed to us before, because we have children discipleship class. God revealed that the plan of the enemy is to make the children from this home thieves so that they will end up in prison. When the woman came, I said before, said the Lord revealed that the enemy's plan is that your children will become thieves. Not knowing that they have even started the process. 15 year old boy, they've started going to shop to lift things. They had started internet fraud. And God confirmed what he said to the woman, whereby she had a dream, whereby the police came to her house and they said, Where is the mother of this boy? Where is the mother of this boy? Because he had been caught for stealing. Sharing with her, I said, What is the Lord saying? Where are you? The boy is stealing. Who are they looking for? Where is the mother? Meanwhile, in the physical, the mother walks. From, she starts walking from around 1. She takes it all the way till 12, till 1 a.m. Child of God. When she comes home, the children have finished doing everything they, wanted to, they want to do. Negative things in her absence. Many of us parents, that is the situation we are. We don't know what is happening in the life of our children. The Lord is waking us up. Thank God for that mother that God has shown her mercy that she's learning to wake up today. And the Lord said, go, leave that job. Go home and take care of your children. It is a message for a lot of us parents. Those things that are fighting us, resisting us from going after the lambs, God said we should club it to death. If it's the love of money, we should club it to death. Child of God, if it's, if it's marital crisis, we should face it and club it to death. For the sake of the children, child of God. Generation of mothers that don't care. They don't care. But it's busy, busy for money. Let the Lord have mercy on us. Child of God. Let us wake up. Do you know why we must wake up? Genesis chapter 44. In closing, Genesis 44. We want to see reasons why we must wake up. God is expecting me to wake up. God is expecting you to wake up. Genesis 44. And I am reading from verse 30 all the way to verse 34. And now, my Lord. I cannot go back to my father without the boy. Our father's life is bound up in the boy's life. If he sees that the boy is not with us, our father will die. We, your servants, will indeed be responsible for sending that grieving white great white haired man to his grave. My Lord, I guaranteed to my father that I would take care of the boy. I told him, if I don't bring him back to you, I will bear the blame forever. So please, my Lord, let me stay here as a slave instead of the boy and let the boy return with his brothers. For how can I return to my father if the boy is not with me? I couldn't bear to see the anguish this will cause my father.
child of God. Are we going to return before God on the day of judgment without the children? Are we going to break the heart of the Father when he's counting the blessings he has released upon us, when he's counting our house and the members of that house? Are the children going to be missing? Child of God, it is written. And now, my Lord, I cannot go back to my father without the bond. Our father's life is bond in the boy's life. Beloved, think about it. We cannot return to the father without that bond. We cannot return to the father without that daughter, without that son. Why? The life of the father is inside that child. God created that child for a reason. He says, if he sees the boy is not with us, our father will die. We, your servants, will indeed be responsible for sending the grieving white-haired man to his grave. What does it mean? The heart of the father will be greatly broken. We'll be greatly broken beyond comfort if he doesn't see us return to heaven with that gift that he gave us. The Bible says, my Lord, I guarantee to my father that I will take care of the, ch of the boy. Child of God, will you guarantee to the father today? That you are going to wake up as a parent. That you are going to wake up as a caretaker. That you are going to wake up as, a, as, as, a, as one that God has given a responsibility over the children to. Are you going to wake up? Am I going to wake up? That the children that are around us, we are going to give account for them. Am I going to wake up as a teacher? Are you going to wake up as a teacher? Are you going to wake up as a guardian? As an auntie, as an uncle? Are you going to wake up? And do your part, child of God. Because that boy, Samuel, was committed to Eli's care. So any child that is in your care, you have a responsibility. Child of God, are you going to guarantee the father that you will take care of the child? He said, I, my Lord, I guarantee to my father that I will take care of that boy. I told him, if I don't bring him back to you, I will bear the blame forever. Think about it. He said, I will bear the blame forever. Do you want to be in heaven and your child is burning in hellfire? Is that what you want, child of God? The Bible says, so please, my Lord, let me stay here as a slave instead of the boy. Child of God, let us bear the, the, the pain. Let us bear the pain. Let us stop putting the burden on the children, child of God. Let us bear the pain. Let us pay the price. Instead of leaving the children with internet to train them, child of God, leave that internet you are working on, working on in your job. If it means you being a slave, deprive yourself of your pleasure to see that it is well with these children. If it will make us slaves, many of us as parents, we are busy working because we, we are living in houses. We are, we are ready to work for the building, but we are not ready to labor for the children. Child of God is better to live in a small rented apartment, be a slave, and see that it's well with the children, than to build a big mansion. You are busy paying mortgage. You don't have time to be at home with the children. Child of God, this is God's word. He says, so please, my Lord, let me stay here as a slave instead of the boy, and let the boy return with his brothers. It's the will of God. That the children that God gave us as gift, we return back to the father, not the enemy. He says, for how can I return to my father if the boy is not with me? I couldn't bear to see the anguish it will cause my father. Let us have this heart that I am not ready to return without the children God has committed into my hands. Let our heart be a heart that loves the Father, that we are saying that this thing that is an issue in the heart of the Father, and we pay the price. Why? So that this burden be lifted from my Father's heart. Child of God, are we going to arise today? The children need us more than ever before. The children are in trouble. Animals are eating them up. And God is saying, arise today. Rescue the, my lambs. Rescue them from the mouth of the devil. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Beloved, are you dear? You are not born again. You have not become a child of the kingdom. Why not pray after me and say, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. I am a sinner. Wash me, cleanse me. Purify me 
write my name in the book of life. Grant me the grace to walk with you in obedience. Thank you, Father, for saving my, my soul. Child of God, Jesus is coming soon. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm.